one of the key aspects of time management is prioritization, which is deciding what to do when. This is one way that you can rank your to do list and we've got other presentations on how to generate that to do list. But knowing what you've got to do right now and what you can put off until later is another key part of time management. And it's important to distinguish between being efficient, which might be working really, really hard, but on things that don't actually need doing now and effectiveness. These are things that you need to get done and that you'll feel much better for having completed. It's distinguishing between what is urgent and what is important. And these aren't necessarily the same thing. Thus, it helps us stop procrastinating. It stops us putting off those important things and, and, and ending up in a crisis point. It helps us plan ultimately. It's also a useful task to undertake because at the end of it, you can feel really confident in saying no to a particular task. You simply haven't got the time to do it because you know when your deadlines are and you know that the work that will be involved in achieving and meeting those deadlines. So one task that you can undertake to help you prioritise is to fill in a matrix like this. Now, this one was created by Dwight Eisenhower. Um, President of the United States in the 1950s. Now for him, it was very different. Obviously, he had a, a lot of things to do, but he also had a lot of people to delegate those tasks to. And so that was the idea behind this matrix that he could work out what other people could help him with. Of course, it's quite different for a lone scholar. So this one's been slightly adapted for students. But as you can see, we have important things running across the top and unimportant things beneath. And when you divide up your to do list, this is really going to help you decide what you need to get on with in the near future. So let's unpack that matrix a little bit more. We're going to look at the top row, first of all, the, the important tasks. So first of all, the important and urgent things. These are things we have to do now and we have to do them because there'll be consequences if we don't do them. So these are things that potentially we've put off. They might be particular deadlines for work, for a piece of writing that we have to submit and we just haven't got round to doing it we have to meet that deadline. Otherwise, we don't get it to our supervisor and there may be an, you know, an impact there. Or if you don't get a job application on time, then you won't be considered for it. Some of these things are foreseen. So you might know that in a couple of hours before a job interview, you want to be preparing for that job. That's an urgent thing that has to be done then. And then there's the unforeseen as well. If a friend or family member falls ill, you might suddenly have to drop everything and care for them. This is the kind of crisis mode. However, if we plan enough, we shouldn't ever put ourselves in this situation. And then that's where the, the kind of important but non-urgent things come in. This is us planning, things that we decide to do. So working on um, a literature review, we can chip away at that slowly over time so that it never becomes this huge um, overbearing deadline. It's also things about our well-being and our health, making sure that we sleep and we eat and we exercise. If we neglect those, then in the long term, we're not going to be as efficient and effective as we hope we will be. As I said, this is where we can stop things becoming urgent. We can plan, we can chip away. So this is the kind of the ideal box. Now we're going to look at the bottom row, the, the unimportant things. First of all, things that appear urgent. So it might be like notifications popping up on your telephone. You look down, you're distracted from the work that you're doing. These might be things that are put on you by others, or they might be um, collective responsibilities that you can delegate. You, know, you can't, it's not quite like um, Eisenhower, he hasn't, you haven't got a huge staff of people that we can get to do jobs for us. But if you're in a shared house and you find that you're doing a lot of the housework um, or cooking, it might be that you can share those particular tasks. Or you could block out time so you're not always distracted. So just checking your email at the start and end of the morning maybe, so you're not constantly looking to see what's come in. And then there are the things that you can eliminate, the things that you can cut out. So this might be uh, scrolling through social media, lots of online shopping, watching television for hours and hours. These are the, the procrastination tasks, you know, cleaning out your wardrobe. It might be something you want to get done at some point, but it's not urgent and it's not important that you do it now. But just to distinguish this, obviously, from those, those important tasks of relaxation, socialising with people, those aren't things I would suggest you eliminate, but just if you plan them appropriately, you don't then need to feel guilty about stopping to take a break. So have a go. Break up your list of tasks that you've already defined, put them into these four quadrants, and it will help you see if you are constantly operating at a kind of crisis level. It will also help you see if there are things that potentially you can cross off your list that aren't that important or urgent for you to do. 
hope you found that useful. There's lots more information on the College LibGuide, but if you would like to speak to Alberto or myself, then please get in touch and we can arrange a one-to-one -one appointment.